Are you confused as to which pedals you should be using on your traditional hot rod build? Well, be confused no more because today we're going... Would it be don't be confused no more? No, because that would be a double negative. Maybe it's don't be confused anymore? Well, now I'm confused, so let's just look at some pedals. So obviously, depending on whatever type of car you're deciding to build, some pedal options may be easier to adapt than others. Now, there's always the 1-800 stores where you can just order up a brand new assembly, master cylinder, power booster, pedals, all that stuff. And that's fine, it's all brand new stuff, you know, easy to bolt on usually. But for some of us, that's kind of the last option. I'm a cheap ass and I like to reuse old used junk. And I think it's kind of neat to see how we can make other parts adapt to other cars. Now, because the AV8 builds, which is a Model A with a flathead V8, are so popular, I'm going to focus mostly on that and because of, there's one sitting right here. We're going to look at all the different pedal options that Ford had throughout the years. We'll look at how each one of them is laid out, give you what I consider to be some pros and cons of each of them, and I'll let you make a decision on what you think is going to work best for your setup. So let's start right from the beginning. Here is a set of stock Model A pedals. These are used from 28 to 31. If you're running a stock banger setup with the original non-synchronized transmission or an updated transmission that'll fit the stock bell housing, these things are already there and there's no reason to change them. These are a pretty unique design in that they mount on a shaft that's actually pressed into the side of the bell housing. So they're already located for you. There's no need to get any brackets or anything. Everything's there and ready to go. So it's a pretty simple design if that works for what you're doing. So here we have a set that's still installed. You can see how they mount on this shaft right here. It's pressed into the side of the bell housing. The linkage hooks up for the mechanical brakes. This linkage hooks up for your clutch. Everything's there. Like I said, there's no brackets to worry about. It's a pretty simple setup, so there's no reason to change that if this works for your setup. So even if you don't want to stick with the stock mechanical brakes and you want to update the hydraulic, this can still work for you. There's no reason you can't make this work, and we'll go into that in a few minutes after we get done looking at the different pedal options. The next set we're going to look at is 33 to 34s. I don't have any 32 pedals on hand. They're very similar to these. Their mount is pretty much the same. Their arm locations are pretty similar. So, so the mounting surface on these is on an angle because 32 used the front K member. 33 actually went to an X member. So you can see this angled piece that sat into the side of the X member. So if you're trying to do this on a Model A frame, it can be kind of tricky to mount this without doing some kind of angled bracket piece. So these are obviously still mechanical brakes. They have a similar design to the Model A's. So trying to use these on a Model A frame obviously can be done with an angled bracket. However, the clutch location is a little bit far away from the transmission. You can bend the arm on the transmission or you can modify the, the rod and to make it work. The nice thing about these is that the pedals are close together so you may not have to bend these at all or if you do it can be pretty minimal. The downside to these is that they're still somewhat valuable so you're probably not going to find them real cheap. So next in line is the 35 to 36 pedals. Now these are what I'm planning to actually use on my car. They're a similar design to the early ones, except they no longer have the flat part of the mounting surface. It's all angled. Again, 35 and 36 had an X member, so that's why it's mounted at an angle like that. These pedals are a little bit further apart, so we probably have to adjust at least the clutch pedal in a little bit so it doesn't hit the frame. So now the reason I decided to go with the 35 and 36 on mine is that if you look at the clutch arm location, it's actually quite a ways further out than the 32 to 34s. And that puts it almost in line perfect with the setup that I have in the car now. Again, these are still mechanical brakes, so it's still going to have the rod to actuate the mechanical brake crossbar. One of the downsides to this design, though, is the way that they designed the mount. These actually had a large hole in the frame that you had to stick the pedal through and then mount it to the frame, whereas the earlier ones didn't have that. These just mounted to the frame. So that can make this a little bit tricky to come up with a mounting solution for, and I think I have an idea how to do mine. I think I'm just going to do it like an access panel so you can actually slide it either up or down into the frame and then replace that piece instead of trying to fish this through the hole, which would be a nightmare on a Model A frame. So I don't have a set of 37 to 38 pedals to show you. They're fairly similar to the 35 and 6s. Those are run off a cable system instead of the rod system. So you're still going to run into the same issues of trying to connect it to a master cylinder if you decide you want to run hydraulic brakes. But the clutch arm location is very similar to this because they still use the arm on the transmission and not the paddle. So now we'll take a look at the pedal sets that came on the cars that had original factory hydraulic brakes. 
Now that started in 39. I'm going to show you 1940 and up. Now 1940 was a little bit different, but essentially 40 to 48 was a very similar design. These are all 42 to 48, I believe. So as you can see, this has the master cylinder incorporated into the bracket. This obviously solves a lot of issues that you would run into when trying to adapt earlier pedal sets to run hydraulic brakes. So the downside of these is the clutch linkage design. And you can see the clutch arm is now way to the left. And the reason for that is because they now had a separate linkage bar that ran across the frame here, tied into this, and ran off a paddle on the side of the transmission. And I'll show you that in just a second when we look at the F1 pedals. Now again, these are a similar design in that they mount through the frame. So you either have to cut a big hole in the frame and try to fish one of the arms through, or you can, like I said before, do an access panel to where you can slide this up in and put that piece back on. Now we'll look at this pedal set right here and you can see just how they mount through the frame because, well, it's still there. So that's actually part of the X member, it's not the main frame itself. But you can see how much of a pain it would be to try to fish this up through there, especially on a tight frame like a Model A. Now another issue you may run into when using this in a Model A frame is if you want to keep the stock center cross member, it may interfere with the master cylinder because of the location of it. So now we'll take a look at one of the most popular pedal options on these, and that's the F1 pedal setup. So these came out of the, the lighter duty trucks from 48 to 52. The reason I didn't go with this on this car is because I'm keeping it all pre-war, so, so obviously 48 would have been too late for me to use. Otherwise, I probably would have run this setup. Now it's kind of similar in the fact that the master cylinder is attached right to the bracket. The difference now, though, is that the bracket is a flat mounting surface and not on an angle. These didn't have an X member, they just had a flat cross member. So these are really popular because of that. And this is that linkage bar that I was talking about that can be kind of a pain to mount. So the way this works is that the throw-up bearing shaft, instead of having an arm on the end of it, now has like a paddle that receives this end on it. This comes across and there's a socket on here that mounts to the frame to stabilize this. And this just pivots on this shaft. Those can be kind of a pain to set up in a Model A frame because again, it's very narrow. Most guys that run these also get rid of that center cross member and they use the F1 cross member as well. These are a really nice setup if you can find one that's in decent shape. This one's actually pretty nice and it was removed correctly. They didn't just torch the ends off. He actually removed all the rivets so it's complete. These things will fit in the frame with just a little bit of trimming. It's a pretty close fit. So they're a really good option. So as you can see, this is where the master cylinder would mount. And then you've got the transmission mount right here. So it takes care of a lot of the unknowns with that. Now the height of the transmission cross member may not be correct. So you may have to section this a little, but it should be pretty easy to make this work. So now there's one pedal set that I didn't cover. And that is, in my opinion, the best option for an AV8 build. And that is the 1939 pedals. It's a one year only. It was the first year of the hydraulic brakes. The reason I like them is because it incorporates the best things of two different pedal sets. So like the 36 pedals, it moves the clutch linkage far to the right. So it lines up pretty well with the clutch arm because they still use the arm in 1939. They hadn't gone to the paddle setup yet until 1940. At the same time, it incorporates the setup for your master cylinder. So while it's not exactly a bolt-in setup, figuring out the linkage on this is one less thing you have to do. They do still use this same style mount because they still had an X member. So since we're mostly focusing on the Model A frame and the AV8 build, let's take a look at some differences in the fitment of the pedal assemblies. So first off is the 32 to 34. Now actually, before I do that, let's back up. There is actually a way to run your stock Model A pedals with a setup like this. Millworks Hot Rod sells kits to adapt pretty much everything from your stock Model A to make this work. They have brackets where you can mount your stock pedals to. It has the shaft hanging off it already. There's a bracket for your emergency brake lever and there's a bracket to mount your stock wishbone. So if you don't want to do the engineering or the fabrication, you can call them up or go on the website and just order that stuff and it's essentially bolt on. If you're a cheap ass like me and just like to use old junk parts, then you try to go this route. So these are the 33 to 34 pedals. Now this white reference line here is pretty much where the pedal pads would want to be in a stock application. 
So it's just a good reference point. Now you can see these would certainly fit. There's plenty of room in here. We have to bend them just a slight bit. I'm just kind of guessing on the mount location, but I think that's somewhere in here is pretty close. Um, again, you run into the issue of the offset of the clutch linkage. It's quite a ways away. You could certainly put a Z in that, or you could bend the arm on this out further. You, you could make it work pretty easily. It's not a huge deal. So those are certainly an option. Your mount wouldn't be that hard to make. It's just a, a cross piece off of here. Go to the frame to the cross member. It'd be pretty easy. You'd have a decent pedal set up. Now here's the 35, 36 pedals. Now you can see the angle on the mount is a lot different. We're the 33, 34 are more like this. These are now almost more parallel with the frame. So it's gonna take a longer piece or you could just you know box it off here, angle it and then box it off there as well. Now the, the clutch pedal is gonna to have to be bent in a little bit because it's gonna hit the frame. But the reason I decided to go with these is because of, like I said before, the location of the clutch arm. Now you look at that and it's going to take a little bit of a modification, but not much to make that line up perfect. So that's why I figured that that just about does itself right there. Now again, it's set up for mechanical brakes. Here's your mechanical brake rod. But we're going to get to that in a minute as to how I plan on making this work. But This is the setup that I chose for this. Um, if you've been watching earlier videos, you know I already built an X member for the rear of this. I'm going to do the same thing for the front. Incorporate the transmission mount into it and the pedal bracket mount so that's why i decided to go with these now again i don't have a 39 setup if i did i would probably use those but it's similar in the design of the 36 to where it hooks into this again you might run into clearance issues with your master cylinder back here so here's our later setup these are 42 to 48 i believe so with this you'd probably have to clearance the cross member and move this back otherwise your pedal's going to be too far forward but here's where that linkage ties in. Here's your linkage arm for your clutch. That linkage would now hang underneath the frame in here. You know, tie into the arm on here, which would be that, that paddle connector instead of this actual arm. So you could certainly make that work. It's just a little bit more work than having this standard setup like this. But again, the nice thing with this is you don't have to worry about trying to figure out how to actuate your hydraulic brakes because it's already all done for you. So here's our F1 pedal assembly. Now it's a pretty similar fitment to the 46 to 48s. The pedals are a little bit closer together, so you may not have to bend these, at least not as much. If you can see down in here, here's that linkage arm, the same as that the 46 to 48s use, well actually 40 to 48s use. Now this would just tie into this arm. It probably wouldn't be too far off. You need to rig up something for a uh, support for this on the side of the frame. And there just isn't much room in here for the linkage. So it would definitely take a little work. You may have to shorten this arm a little bit and slide them over a little to make it work. Because right now this arm is hitting the frame. But it's certainly doable. Plenty of guys use this. And coupled with that F1 cross member, it's a pretty good setup. So the last thing I want to talk about is how to use these early pedal sets, pre-39, with hydraulic brakes. Now the big issue is that the brake pedal is a pull system. Because of the way the mechanical brakes were set up, you pulled on all the rods. Your master cylinder is obviously a push system. So trying to make this work with that can be a little tricky. Now again, if it's something that you don't want to try to fabricate yourself, Millworks Hot Rods does have a setup where you can run hydraulic brakes off your stock Model A pedals. So that's certainly an option and it's already all figured out for you. So here's my plan with this. You've got really two ways to go with this. And I'm not entirely sure which one I'm going with yet, but I've kind of narrowed it down a little bit since I now have the master cylinder for it. So this is what I'm using for a master cylinder. It is not period correct for this build. Certainly not pre-war, but I will not run a single bowl master cylinder on something I'm going to drive. It's really a safety issue, I think. The brakes on these things suck anyway. These early four brakes are a horrible design. And using a single bowl master cylinder is just one more safety thing that I'm not willing to compromise on. So if you want to go 100% period correct, you can buy new or remanufactured master cylinders for that. But if there's a failure with that, you now lose 100% of your brakes. So this is a dual bowl master. These were used on pretty much all Fords. This one is listed as a Mustang, but they were all the same for drum front and rear manual brakes. So if you want to run something like this, drum front and rear manual brakes. I believe they actually sell these now with the three bolt adapter. So this will bolt up 
to your stock pedals. And I think you can actually buy the adapter separately as well. But this is what I'm going to be running on this. So now the issue comes into play as to how to push on this from a pull brake lever. So you have a couple options here when it comes to finding a place to put your master cylinder and how to actuate it. So first off, my original idea was to try to put it right in here. The issue with that comes space with the pedal bracket and plus your fittings are now on the inside and it would be a real pain to try to get them in from inside the frame like that. Now it could certainly be done. The other option was to mount it on this side of the frame. And I think this is probably the route that I'm going to be going. Obviously, the space back here isn't quite as limited as it is up there. Uh, if you're not doing this X-member, who's my dinghy like I am, then you have all kinds of space back here. But one other thing to keep in mind is your actuation of this. So if we were mounting the master up into here, with your pedal assembly like this, obviously stepping on the brake would pull on this rod. Well, my idea for that... is to mount some sort of a mechanism up inside this cross member. Now, a real basic design idea is something like this. So this would be on a pivot on the bottom. And my idea right now is to have a base plate, probably quarter inch steel, that would bolt to the bottom of this cross member. So it'll be, you know, about this big. It'll sit onto the cross member flange and just bolt to it. And it's gonna have the entire mechanism attached to that. So you'd have something similar to this, and again, this is just scrap I had laying around as using it for a demonstration. But you'd have a pivot down here, and here you would tie your arm into the pedal, and here you would tie the actuator arm to your master cylinder. So when you step on the brake, it would just pull ahead like this and actuate your cylinder that way from pulling over here. Now, I think that would work fine if you engineered it correctly and used really heavy-duty stuff to do it. So one of the benefits of this design and why I was trying to use this was it the length of the arms. So because it's going in the same direction, you only need an upward arm on both ends. So this piece, again, like this, could just pivot and it would do the job. Mounting it on the back side, now you have to essentially double the height of this or shorten your, your arm length depending on what you're using for a piece because one arm is going to be up and one arm is going to be down. And that's the design for the other direction is that if this is pointing down as in a Z or an N or whatever you want to call it, now when you pull on this, it would push on that, which will now actuate your master cylinder at the rear. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're designing a system like this. If your master cylinder is in the front, you need a pull and a push forward. If it's in the rear, you need a pull and a push backwards. So that's just going to kind of determine how you make your bracket or whatever linkage you decide to come up with. So there's really a ton of options when it comes to designing this. Again, this is all just stuff I pulled out of the scrap pile. Depending on what you have available, will obviously determine what you can make. Something like this, you could just use this as a pivot point. Weld brackets down there, put some bolts through here, and it could now pivot back and forth like this. You drill a hole up here, drill a hole up here, mount your brake rod here, your master cylinder rod there, and now it just can actuate like that. Obviously, with it being to the rear, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to come up with something a little different. Again, like I said, one arm is going to probably go up, be a center pivot, and then the other arm will hang down, most likely below the frame because of the way the master cylinder is set up. Let's take a closer look at where to mount this master cylinder on here. Now, ideally, you'd want to sit it you know, against the cross member because it'd be easy to mount it. Now, the top of the master cylinder is obviously up above the frame rail and probably protruding into the floor. Now, that wouldn't be a huge deal. You could just make an access cover for it, which I'll probably end up doing anyways. But it, it would just be a, a hump here. But I think mounting it lower like this will eliminate that. But it will also allow me to have that center pivot and an arm hanging off the bottom. It'll give me more distance inside this cross member to have an arm pointing up and an arm pointing down. But I think this is probably going to work better. I'll take some of that scrap, probably a quarter inch plate, just make a bracket that will come off of this, tie into this rail so it will be extremely strong. It will never go anywhere. And we'll have an arm sticking down out of the bottom of this cross member which will actuate the rod in this. So that's the plan for now. I think that will work out all right. Like I said, there's an unlimited number of ways you can do this. It just all depends on how you want to do it, what your creativity level is, what you have available for junk or parts or other mechanisms to make this work. 
So hopefully you found this helpful in trying to decide what you want to run for pedals in your build. So depending on what you want to do for work in fabricating and modifying these, any of them can work. And then like I said earlier, there's always the option of aftermarket stuff. Personally, I try to stay away from that, but that doesn't mean you have to. If money is less of an issue than time is, that's always a good option. So as always, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe and hang around. Come back for the next one if you want to see what I come up with for an actuator design on this to run that master cylinder. Wah, 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 w